Hey class, uh, I'm making this video a little early, but I'll send it out on Thursday as usual my, uh, uh, my custom. Because uh, I'm going to the exotic land of Kansas. So I'm going for a grant. Uh, it's the University of Kansas is the lead and uh, they're working with the University of Hawaii. Uh, it's, far, it's about refrigerants. And uh, we're a finalist and this is the National Science Foundation is doing a site visit. So. I'm included in the grant, so I'm going there, and I'm, I have some duties while I'm there. So, but I, I was told on Thursday night uh, when I'm sending this video out, they're gonna they're gonna cater Kansas City's best barbecue. So I'll, I guess I'll experience Kansas City's best barbecue. So that'll be interesting. But uh, this this week's video, uh, and I I saw this article, and I plan on using it anyways, uh, is about molecular biomolecular archaeology. So what I like a lot of times with chemistry is how it flows into other uh, disciplines. And, and uh, sometimes chemistry is referred to as the central science. So there's just so much you can do with chemistry and chemistry is related and used as a tool for so many fields. And this one is to look at lipids. Lipids are fats. So uh, what uh, Julie Dune does is she takes pottery and she crushes it up and extracts it usually with uh, methanol and other uh, uh, acids to uh, look at the fats, the lipids that are in there. And what did they find out? They found out what they put in these jars. Uh, and, and some interesting things are, I mean, besides the variety of things, they found resins, they've found different animals, uh, um, fats in there. Uh, they found milk and honey as well. So I can tell that coming from this. And it's interesting with milk because uh, generally speaking, humans in the wild, uh, once after we, we pass infancy, uh, tended to become lactose intolerant. Well, then everyone did. And, but when we domesticated animals, we started to no longer be uh, lactose intolerant. And this shows that and the, the, uh, the lipids using this and, and, uh, and this kind of puts the idea like uh, humans, we were all just like struggling and, and just barely getting by. We had interesting lives and, and like in North Africa, for instance, uh, this article talks about how people would, would be kind of like, like we, all right, we call them snowbirds in the United States where you go up to the up in the East Coast, typically sometimes it's uh, New, York, New York State or something like that. Uh, during the summer and then return down to Florida during the winter. We, we oftentimes call those people uh, snowbirds. Uh, and there was something like that uh, in, um, in prehistoric times in Africa. People would, would summer kind of down, uh, or I, guess, I guess around Egypt. I don't know, it doesn't really say in the article, but then ascend to the mountains where it's cooler in the summer. So, I mean, sure, why not take that journey? And... Uh, and so uh, Julie's interpretation of this is that life was very much like today. I mean, the, these bottles right here, are, or they say jars, or they, they're, they're meant to make babies smile. So these are, these are playthings, they're toys, but they're also functional where they're uh, given food for babies. And, and I do think about this sometimes, about uh, back in time how things were. And it's, it's interesting how, I mean, how life has changed. But it's also amazing how life is similar. I mean, I, I know a little bit more about like uh, Roman Empire times. I mean, uh, if you look at like the the um, the graffiti on the walls in Pompeii and Herculaneum from Mount Vesuvius, uh, you'll see graffiti talking about like people saying how amazing their girlfriends are and. Uh, if you look at some of the graffiti in, in ancient Rome, when it comes to the politicians, I mean, it would make today's politics look extremely tame. So to the extent of things, so it, it was in it. And I mean, really, much of life is falling in love, raising a family. I mean, much of those experiences, working, spending time, going, going to places, that's, that, was, that was around back then too. So it's just, just interesting. It's interesting. It's also interesting that, that chemistry in a small way can shed some life on this and, and see uh, how it works. I am 
admittedly I'm really terrible at biology. This uh, this talks about the fat of ruminant and non-ruminant animals. I had to look that up. Uh, so it has to deal with their stomachs. So like cows and goats, those are ruminant animals. And we humans and other carnivores and omnivores uh, were non-ruminant animals. So uh, the this this uh, analysis led uh, us to understand more about what types of animals that uh, were consumed back then as well. So I think this is interesting, fascinating. So chemistry meets archaeology. Uh, I'm not gonna. I, hopefully, I know I'm making this video on Friday. Uh, hopefully, I was able to connect with you if you need anything. But in general. If you need anything, please let me know. I'm, I'm here to help, right? I've, I, especially with basic need stuff, mental health issues. And I mean, of, of course, I mean, course material as well. I mean, that's my primary duty, but I'm, I'm talking about uh, other duties as well. So I have a duty to you, uh, my students. So uh, aloha for now. Enjoy your weekend.